Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from Leak Code called Sum Root to Leaf Numbers. It's a medium. We're going to jump right into it. So you're given the root of a binary tree containing digits from 0 to 9 only. Each root to leaf path in the tree represents a number. For example, the root to leaf path 1, 2, 3 represents the number 123. Return the total sum of all root to leaf numbers. A leaf node is a node with no children. So example one, we have one, then two and three. So what are all of our paths here? It's one to two and one to three. So one to two is going to be 12 and one to three is going to be 13. Summing this up, 12 plus 13, we're gonna get 25. Example two, we have four, nine, zero, five, one. What are all of our paths starting from the root node to the leaves? We can go four, nine, five. So 495, 491, or just 40. So that's going to be three numbers, right? 495, 491, and 40. Summing all of those together, we'll get 1,026. And we have some constraints over here. The number of the nodes in the trees in the range of 1 to 1,000 inclusive. So we know for sure we're not going to get an empty node as our input, right? It's not going to be none. We have at least one node in our tree. And all the values are between 0 and 9 inclusive. So it just represents that one digit that we are going to be adding to our number each time as we go down our path. So how are we going to solve this? Well, for this, let's take a closer look at example two. So I have 49051. I know I'm starting at my top root over here, right? So I have four as my first digit in my number. Now, if I go to nine, I want the number 49. So what I can do at each level is just multiply by 10, the current number I have, and add that new roots value. So four times 10 is going to be 40. Adding nine to that will give us 49. So this number right now is going to be 49. Now, say we go left again, what we want to do is just multiply this number by 10. So 49 times 10 will give us 490. And to that, we just want to add 5. So we're going to get 495 for this path over here. Now, this is a leaf node. We can't go any further. So we want to store this number as our current total. Now, we want to go back up and down our other path. So instead of adding 5, we want to be adding 1, which puts our total to 491. So we just want to add this to our current running total. Then there's nothing else to go down from from one here. There's no right child or left child. So we're just going to go back up to nine. There's nothing else to do. We covered both of our children. We go back up to four. The only other path remaining is on the right child. So over here, again, right, as we go down a level, we want to multiply this number by 10. So we're going to do 40 plus what we have in here, which is zero, which means our path is just going to be 40. And we'll add that to our total. And summing this up will give us our final total that we want to output. So that's all we really need to do. We know this is a tree, so we're going to be going down an entire path, which means this is a DFS solution. So how would we actually code this up? First, we know we need a running total. So let's initialize that. Self.total is going to equal zero. And now for our DFS function, I find it easier to write it within this bigger function over here, just so there are less variables we need to be passing in or keeping track of. So let's define our DFS in here. And we're going to be passing in whatever root that we have. Let's call this R. Now we also want to be building up our current number that we have going down a path, which we need to multiply by 10 every time and add whatever root value we have at that point to it. So we also need to keep track of our current number. So let's pass that in as well. So how are we going to define our DFS? Well, with a recursive function, there are two things we want to keep in mind, our base case and our recursive case. For our base case, well, we know for a fact that we're going to have at least some node in our tree. It's not going to be empty. We have at least one node. So we don't need to check if our root is none. Instead, what we can do is just check if we are at a leaf node. So there's no right or left child. So if r.left is none and r.right is none, that means we are at a leaf node and we want to take whatever our current value is and just add that to our total. So sulf.total plus equals current. But before doing so, since we are at a leaf node, we want to make sure we are updating our current number with our own roots value. So let's actually update that. So current is going to equal whatever we had in current so far. So current. We want to multiply that by 10 and add our own roots value. So r dot val. And this is going to be our new current. So we're going to be adding this new updated current to total. Now, if we are not a leaf node, 
That means we haven't hit our base case yet. We want to check if we have a right child or a left child. So if r dot left, if we do have a left child, we're just going to call DFS again with r dot left and this updated current. So it's just passing in current and the same thing for right. So if r dot right, DFS with r dot right and current. And that's it. That's our DFS function. So we just need to go ahead and call this. We're going to be calling this with our root node. And initially, we're going to be passing in a number of zero. We haven't added any nodes yet. So it starts off with zero. Once we're done with this, we just need to return solve.total. So let's go ahead and submit this. And it is accepted. Now talk about space and time complexity. For time, we are going through every single node in our tree. So this is going to be O of n if there are n nodes in our tree. And for space, it's also going to be O of n, right? Our recursive call stack could go as far down as the number of nodes in our tree. So that's also going to be O of n. Now, before leaving, let's actually just run through this example to see exactly what our code is going to do line by line. So say we're passing in this example over here where the first thing we do is define self.total and initialize that to be zero. So self.total is zero over here. Next, we define our DFS function. And now we're going to call it with our root and zero. So once we actually go in this function, r is set to our root, which is four, and current is going to equal zero that we had passed in. The first thing we want to do is update our current. So current is zero, zero times 10 is still going to be zero. And to that, we just want to add our roots value. So it's going to be four, which means current is now equal to four. Now we want to check if r dot left is none and r dot right is none. Both need to be none, neither are none. So we don't go in this if. We check instead if r dot left, that's true, there is a left. So we're just calling DFS again with the left child. So what is four is left, that's nine. So r equals nine. And we're passing in our current, which is four. So we go back in our DFS function, we update current again. Current is four, four times 10 is 40, plus r dot val, which is nine, which means our new current is going to be 49. So current equals 49. Now we make a check if r dot left is none and r dot right is none. Left is none, so we don't even need to go checking this other condition. We're in here. If r dot left, that's true, it does exist. We're going in this left child. So we're going to be calling this with 5 and the number 49. This is the path number we have so far, right? 49. Going back in this function, we update our current. So current, which is 49 times 10 is 490. To that, we're adding 5. So our new current is going to be 495. Now we make a check, r dot left is none and r dot right is none. We've hit our leaf node and this is our entire path, right? 495. So we're just going to add that to our total. So self dot total is now going to have 495. Now there is no left here. There is no right here. So we exit this function and we're going to return to our caller. So we exit out of here and we return to our caller, which was nine. Now nine had just gone in this left condition over here and we've just returned from there. So now we also want to check the right. If r dot right, that's also true. So now we're going to go in our right child. So calling DFS with r dot right, we're passing in one for root and our current is going to be 49. We're back in our recursive function again. We update current. So current times 10 is 490. To that, we're adding r dot val, which is one. So our new current is going to be 491. Now there is no left child or right child. We are at our leaf node, our base case. So we're just updating self.total to add on current, which is 491. So 495 plus 491 is 986. Now there are no more statements for us to go through in this function. So we exit out and return to our caller. Now back in our caller, we're back at nine over here. We just gone in this right function if r dot right. There's nothing else for us to go through. So again, we return to our caller. And we're back up at four over here. Now at four, we had just gone the r dot left. So we still have the right side to check. Going down there, we're gonna call DFS one last time, passing in the right child of four, which is zero, and our current, which was four. In this DFS, we are going to multiply our current by 10. So that puts us at 40. And we're adding r dot val, which is zero. So our new current is going to be 40. Now r dot left is none, r dot right is none, this is our base case. So we're just adding 40 to solve dot total which puts our total at 1,026. Now there are no more lines for us to go through, so we're gonna exit and return to our caller. And once we return to our caller, there are also no more lines for us to go through. We were at that last if condition. So we exit entirely to our caller, and the next line is to return solve.total, which correctly outputs 1,026, just as we had expected. So we just went ahead and solved some root to leaf numbers. If you have any questions with this whatsoever, of course, let me know down below. I'll answer all of them. If this video was helpful, like, comment, share, and subscribe. It really supports the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next one.